Hickok 45 here. Let's shoot. All right. He dogged. <laughs> Why is this still loud? It has a suppressor on it, doesn't it? Plus, it's a 300 blackout. It's supposed to be quiet. What is wrong with this thing? Let's just lay it down here and see if we can, uh, I don't know, discern what the problem is. There must be an issue here. I'm not sure what it is. Yeah. Well, I can tell you what the issue is. That's why you're here. That's why we're here. To uh, kind of answer that question and talk about why it's still loud. A 300 blackout with a suppressor on it. You know, it's supposed to be quiet, isn't it? Well, not necessarily, is it? It, it could be that it has something to do with the speed of the bullet. Yeah, it really could. And uh, that's something a lot of people are probably still not quite aware of or knowledgeable about. Not that I am necessarily the expert, but in case you didn't know it, the bullet needs to be pretty much subsonic to get the quietest operation, all right? Uh, there's a couple of sounds you get out of a firearm being a bullet leaving the muzzle, okay, of any firearm. You get the, the pop from the air rushing back into the barrel, okay? And that's what a suppressor does. It kind of prevents that from, from being so loud. I don't know if you've ever had a, uh, if you've ever seen me, well, you, if you've ever cleaned a muzzle loader and you pull the patch out real quick or the water and you get a pop, it's the air rushing back into it that makes that sound. I had, a, as a kid, a kind of a rubber pop gun. Imagine me having a toy gun when I was a kid. I was probably six years old, five. And it, it shot ping pong balls. I'll never forget that. And you stick them in the end. It was a soft rubber kind of thing with a big muzzle size of a ping pong ball. And when you, you'd hit squeeze the air, you know, to squeeze it out, squeeze it, and it would shoot that ping pong ball. And it would pop. And it wasn't much velocity. But it was the air rushing back in very quickly. You just pop. You all know that. You can little sight. 20 examples of that, but is the air rushing back in? Now, I guess if you open a pop bottle, pull a cork out, there you go, that sort of thing. So that's one type of sound you get, and a suppressor uh, lowers that dramatically, doesn't it? But now the other sound you get out as the supersonic bullet as it breaks the sound barrier is that crack. And so you're going to get that either way, and that's what you're getting here. Now with this, this ammo is supersonic, need I tell you, that I just fired. And uh, so you get a reduction of the pop, but you'd still have the crack, the sound of the, the round. That's why it was still loud. So, and before I inform you any further, I want to thank the people that help us out. Buds, yes, they're just a real heavyweight in our industry and you're all familiar with them been a supporter for about 10 years so we really appreciate them as well as silencer central high quality outfit they do one thing and they do it really really well and uh, they're very innovative great company the sonoran desert institute sdi.edu a great distance learning school you get certified in gunsmithing they have lots of different course work that you might be interested in taking check them out okay and uh yeah, so to further your physics <laughs> education, I'm probably the last person to be explaining these sorts of things, but I know a little bit about it. Again, the air rushing back into the muzzle, that's where you get that pop, and you can reduce that or even quiet it down pretty much, uh, but it's difficult to deal with that supersonic crack, right? So that was regular supersonic ammo, and then before I shoot some subsonic uh, as a demonstration here, Again, you might wonder, and in fact, a lot of people do. I see lots of comments about that, asking, why would you have a suppressor if it doesn't quiet it? Make it quiet. No, you've seen a lot of James Bond movies, right? And uh, you would be amazed now, and many of you already know that because you, you know, you're on YouTube, you're on Instagram, you're on all the social medias, and you see a lot of people shooting and hunting rifles and all kinds of firearms. Well, hunters now, uh, are using uh, suppressors very, very frequently because you say, well, why would they do that? As well as military, people in the military, operators, because it does reduce the signature and whether you're hunting or you're 
you know, in battle or whatever the situation might be, reduces the need for, I guess, ear protection, blowing your eardrums out. I mean, really they're hearing protection devices, right? As much as anything. And it's more difficult for the, the, the game or the enemy or whatever to know exactly where, where you were, right? That kind of thing. So very common in, uh, in those uh, avenues and just uh, fun shooting when you don't want to uh, blast your eardrums out, correct? So, yeah, so it has to do with supersonic and subsonic. Now this is a kind of a subsonic round. I think it's 220 grains. I believe these are Underwood. And uh, I've had this mag loaded a while, I forget what's in it. I know what's in it, bullets. Yeah, so let's try these, see if we can tell the difference, all right? And again, it's, it's really difficult to get something totally quiet, but uh, this uh, Banish uh, Gold 30 does a, does a good job. All right. So I won't even put my ears on, and I'm going to send a couple more over there. See the difference? Quite a lot, right? See? You don't get to hear the gong like that normally, do you? Or that plate. The plate is the loudest thing you hear, <laughs> whereas normally sometimes I can't even hear the plate when I shoot it. Yeah. So, yep. That is subsonic, and uh, so you're reducing the crack or eliminating the crack uh, of the bullet, the air rushing back into the, to the barrel uh, muzzle, and then you also don't have the supersonic crack out there at a distance. And, uh, you know, I, I could probably uh, tell you more if I uh, went back and, and thought about my... Uh, education and my teaching career at uh, MIT, you know, Stanford and all that, but I won't. I do want to thank uh, Alabama Holster, located guess where? Alabama, yeah, I make the greatest little Kydex uh, concealment holsters you have ever seen, at least that I have ever used, and uh, they're really, really nice. Appreciate you supporting them as well, and we appreciate their support. So, yeah, that's what you got. You've got a uh, a physics issue here and there's probably more that i could tell you but i tell you what i will rely on you all what else do you know about suppressors uh in terms of why they mitigate the you know the sound and decibels and everything and do you use them uh out hunting and you know things that you're doing some people also before i let you go i believe some people think uh, people who haven't been around shooting too much or suppressors, they think that the suppressor slows the bullet down to the point where it's not as loud. And that's really not uh, it. That's really not it, okay? It's that sound, uh, what it does uh, with the pop and everything I was talking about. So anyway, uh, that's why that suppressor might still be loud. Life is good. Before you leave, I want to remind you to check out our friends Talon Gun Grips and Ballastol. Talon Gun Grips have been a staple of the channel for years. As you know, they make grip tape that you can attach to the grip of your handgun or the pistol grip on your rifle. And honestly, anything you're trying to not drop and have a better handle on, right? Also, Ballastol, of course. Dad's been using Ballastol since the 90s. It's been a staple on the channel as well. They make a, it's a cleaner and a lubricant. It's non-toxic, it's a great product. Anything for your guns or anything you're trying to lubricate, it's a great way to go. Thank you guys so much for watching the video.